Like us on Facebook. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Dr. Susan L. Edelman is on the phone. She is a psychiatrist. She's an adjunct clinical, I never know how to say that word, Robin, uh, adjunct clinical associate professor at Stanford University's Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. And she has written a book called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. How come Robin isn't even here at a microphone? Well, she's, put, she's busy putting the alligator away. See, we had an alligator in the last segment. So uh, the other day, we went to um, this this beach down in, uh, what was it, Cass- what was it called? Caladisi. Caladisi Island. Yes. And, and, uh, and I noticed there were a few women out there, because I, I pretty much am good at noticing that. Well, you're a manly man, uh, yeah, you see. And, and, uh, and, and I always thought sexy was easy for women. I always thought you women, mm-hmm. you, it's hard for us guys, because I, I can't even figure out what is sexy for guys. So. Well, some women are high maintenance. <laughs> High maintenance. They are. Uh, Some women are. Be your own brand of sexy. Do you remember Mm -hmm. the sexual revolution of the 60s? Yes. It says here. I don't don't know that I... I remember reading about it. I was too young to be (laughs) part of it. I I guess. Uh, Dr. Edelman, good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Where are you calling from? Palo Alto, California. All right. I love California. We had a second guest today from California. Yeah. Well, thank you for getting up early to talk to us about this. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the world, well, maybe not the world, but the, the country, I hope we have leveled off the playing field for men and women in, in, in many ways. Do you think we have? Well, that's what I'm worried about, and that's why I've written this book, because I think that in many ways we've forgotten the meaning of liberation. I think we need a new sexual revolution because the old one didn't really turn out the way we'd hoped, especially for women. It promised women more choices, but women today are as confused as ever because we went from if you have sex before marriage, you're a tramp, to today, if you're a virgin, you're a prude. So that's really forgetting the meaning of liberation, the freedom to choose for yourself. Oh, I like Please. that. Well, from uh, from a father's point of view, we we hope that there's still some sense of ho- of waiting. I mean, that's what that's what you want as as a as a parent. I shouldn't say a father, a parent, right? I yeah, mean, for, for both so. sexes. I mean, for your sons and your daughters, you want you want them to, e- even though I mean, when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to wait. Isn't it crazy how you get older? You start looking back at it. You start realizing why your parents wanted you to wait. <laughs> well, some of that is just human nature. But I think today there's even more pressure on kids to be sexy and sexual, especially women, to be sexy and sexual because we get it in media images everywhere. You open a magazine and the women look all perfect and airbrushed and you see it on television there's a lot of people hopping in and be- in and out of bed in magazines and so so our culture is so saturated with sexuality we need we need to be teaching people that they do have choices hmm. and, and sexy is an interesting thing uh, I'll just try to be as honest as I can about this subject because as a man I can we, we can be with people, and I can, I can, I mean, I am always honest with Robin about these things. And she says, oh, is she pretty? I said, well, yeah, she's pretty, but, you know, mm-hmm. she's sexier than she is pretty, or, or vice versa. You know, yeah. she's prettier than she is, because a lot of times she's pretty, but to me, she, at the age of 60, she looks like, you know, a child. Mm-hmm. So she's, she might be 60 to a 17-year-old, but did I say sex? She might be sexy to a 16-year-old, mm-hmm. not 60, but. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, everything's relative. It, yeah, we, I guess. All, we all view people in different ways. I guess so. But the part I wondered about, you said earlier, is that we are asking our ladies to be sexy and sexual. Um, how far does that go? I, I would think that sexual would only be with the, the person that you're having a relationship with. Well, unfortunately, that's not always the way it goes. 
and so many women are raised to be people pleasers that we can sometimes do things because we think it's the right thing to do or the normal thing to do or we feel pressured into it and the more messages we get that this is normal and that everybody wants to be normal even though we also want to do what's right for us as individuals sometimes being normal is what wins out especially when you're young or confused about these kind of things and uh, sometimes women will do a uh, retrospective of their lives i mean they'll be home they'll be raising the children uh, they'll be trying the hardest they can to do everything right and then the children grow up and they have their own families which is as it should be and then there she is because all of a sudden her purpose isn't there anymore if she really loves her children that you know she she misses the purpose exactly you, it's a real it's a real void in her life sometimes huh? do you know where we see where we see the the inequality of men and women is in this business in in the tv part of this business because in the TV part of this business, and to, and to the credit of those at WESH, they do not fit into this category, by the way. But a, a, a lady, a, a newscaster, for example, um, starts getting older and they just let her go. I mean, she's not unattractive. She's still very attractive, but they replace her with somebody younger. A, ma- a man, on the other hand, her counterpart, is there. He's 80 years old. He's still telling the news. So it is kind of crazy that we have that double standard. But, uh, but I will say that we have a couple of local TV stations that have not done that same thing. So it's not across the board. And I think that speaks to the pressure on women to continue to be sexy and sexual yeah. as they get older. But, but I think that a lot of women are participating in this, in this problem which worries me. That's part of why I think we need a new revolution. We need women to be supporting each other and being their own brands of sexy as well. Do you know this actress, this gorgeous Christina Hendricks on Mad Men? She's the voluptuous red-headed woman who... Oh, I love her character, yeah. It's incredible. Women are calling her fat because she's not a size zero or two What's like her name? the rest of the women in Hollywood. Christina, Christina Hendricks. Okay, I'm looking her up. I don't know her. And I just can't, and, and, and you know, the women that are calling her fat is because they're probably jealous of her. Oh, because no. They're you, calling this girl fat? Yeah. <laughs> Holy mackerel. And they're, and, and, and they're probably jealous of her because then the women that are making those accusations, they feel inadequate themselves and they don't want to fix themselves. They would rather destroy other women. So I think that's that's why I'm hoping to help women be more aware of of these sorts of things because the more aware we are, the more we can support each other in this rather than bashing other women who, for any reason, don't fit the mold of what they think they should look like. Because, you know, there, there are statistics that say like 50 to 90 percent of women are unhappy with the way their bodies look. That's a huge number. So we're perpetuating this if we're bashing other women. We don't need to be doing that. And uh, yet uh, Marilyn Monroe was not a size two when she was, you know, like one of the original sex kittens. She was a normal exactly. sized woman. Exactly. exactly. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, again, this is my own opinion, that when I'm with a lady and I feel that she's sexy, A, I'll probably never know that I think that about her, but, <laughs> but, but B, I, I think she doesn't always have that look that you're talking about. That I don't, I, sometimes I think you ladies don't even know that you're sexy. That's what I think. Exactly. A lot of women think that men want them to be thinner than they actually even care about. Oh, my goodness. Or, or it's, it's a lot of times in the personality. I mean, I, I've met ladies who were, uh, upon first glance, you know, when, they, when I first met them, they looked really sexy, and then you get to know them, and suddenly there's, it's not as sexy because they are, it's the whole person. And, 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 and P.S., may I just add this, that it doesn't really matter. I mean, why do we have to be sexy anyway? It, it, it really isn't as important as the society is making it seem to be. Well, I'm so glad to hear you say that. We need more men speaking out about this to women. Hmm. I mean, because nobody cares if we're sexy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, When you have uh, women in the workplace and they're, 
you know, they're very good at their job. They're happy with their life and happy with their careers. And then you've got other women that are very vocal in the political arena, for instance. And they're still saying that women are getting a raw deal. They're not getting the pay and women are being uh, uh, glanced over. I just don't agree with that. I mean, why should these other women just keep, you know, bashing this when I think everything is fair? Well, part of our society is being able to speak out when you think that you're um, not being treated fairly. And my big concern is women who aren't speaking out on this because they think this is the way it is and they don't feel empowered. I've, I've, uh, part of the reason I wrote this book is because of a young woman who told me what dating was like on college campuses, on her college campus, and the guys were asking her to come over and hang out, and she asked me what that was, and I, as the older woman, I, psychiatrist, single person, I was supposed to know this, and I wasn't quite sure, and it turned out these guys really mostly wanted casual sex, mm-hmm. and that wasn't what she wanted so she didn't have much chance to learn about dating and I loved college dating so this broke my heart and I wondered what had happened and and so I'm really concerned that that these young girls are are missing out we thought women would be treated better when we were seen as equals wow. not that a That's lot of the, men would would take casual sex for granted that's troubling to me too as a, as a guy I, I would hope that the the young men who are doing that are the minority and, and and I'm also guessing that their their counterparts, the ones who aren't doing that, are probably just too shy to ask these girls out. I, I, I mean, that's part of it too. There's there's a whole guy thing that's afraid. You know, she's too sexy for me. She'll never go for me, and and they never get asked. And and those guys should be stepping up to the plate. And you know, the whole the whole um, what, the, the etiquette thing. You know, mm-hmm. you know the whole anyway. Things have changed a lot. I just spoke to some young women at a college campus who told me that um, they have to go in packs to some of these parties because the guys are so aggressive. And if a guy would bring them a flower on campus, they would think he was a sexual predator. The guys can't even be doing sweet things for them. Oh, my. The culture has changed. It's so sexually charged on some of these campuses. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, can I ask you to hang on? Because we, we've been all over the map a little bit. We want to be fair to the book. Uh, I know that you spoke to a lot of different people in order to come up with some of the things you have in the book. And the book is actually a helpful book, uh, especially for ladies. So let's, let's uh, when we come back, uh, be f- more focused on the book itself. Because it's kind of a it's a it's a big universal topic sexuality and sexiness, and it gets everybody's attention. We'll take That's a little great. we'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. More clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms around. The high 85 to 87. Hardly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in places near the coast during the evening hours. The low 69 to 71. For tomorrow, periods of clouds and sun with a shower or thunderstorm around from late morning on. The high 84 to 88. Then on Friday, partly sunny with a high of 88 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mail Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch plenty.
Planning for a better and safer retirement, Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. R&D Tactical Solutions, Ocala's indoor gun range. 12 climate-controlled, state-of-the-art lanes. R&D Tactical Solutions, full retail store, everything from firearms to CCW classes. Located next to the Supervisor of Elections. Open 9 to 7 weekdays, 9 to 5 Saturdays, and 10 to 4 Sundays. Call 622-7468. R&D Tactical Solutions, Ocala's indoor gun range. Call 622-7468. All right, 21 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. We are talking about sexy. Yep. Right? <laughs> uh, Dr. Susan Edelman is on the phone. She has a book called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. And it says in her bio here that she has been doing this for 29 years. 29 years. Wow. So th- tell, tell me, uh, the uh, who, who do you want to pick up the book, doctor? Well, I think the book is... Is speaking to young women, especially women who are a little confused about the dating scene and what's right for them. So, but it can appeal to a woman of any age who's struggling with these issues. But I think, in general, a lot of younger women, 20s and 30s, probably are interested in this kind of book. Or, you know, mothers might want to get it for their daughters. In case their daughter's not quite sure she's right. having a problem. Is, is it fair to say to a girl, to a young woman, that there are two types of men, those who will respect you and those who won't? And then you can break those into other categories, but just to, to stay away from the ones who won't respect you. I mean, at, at least let the p- first thing you use as a, as, a, as a litmus test is to see whether he, he respects you or not. I think that's a great idea. I think that that requires women to have good instincts and intuition and that doesn't isn't always the case for some women so that's part of why i wrote this book because to thrive in this kind of culture you really need to be able to figure out how to be somewhat intuitive about this process do women who are in same-sex relationships have the same issues as women in opposite sex relationships well, I'm not really an expert in that category, so I, I really wrote the book more for heterosexual relationships. So I have, I have a quick story I want to tell you. This is from when I was in my 20s, which is the late 1970s, okay? So you have an idea of how old I am and how far back this goes. I was out in Los Angeles, and Santa Monica specifically. Um, there was a beautiful, cute girl, appropriately my age. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who she was, though, but she came into the apartment that I was crashed at. I was... I was bumming in my brother's place actually uh, and and all the guys left and I, it was just me and this cute girl and I was good at music and I was good at figuring out songs and she had this Fleetwood Mac album and she wanted to know what the chords were to these songs so I said oh no problem I can, I can show you how to do this and at one and, and of course in my mind I think gosh this, this girl's really pretty and I was 22 years old so I guess you know whatever I was feeling was natural at that time and she said something to me that I've never forgotten. She said, gosh, you're the first guy who hasn't tried to get into my pants. And I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't that it didn't cross my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, I mean, to be totally honest, it did. But when she said that, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm glad I didn't do anything un- inappropriate other than trying to show her how to play these songs. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And she seemed to be expressing to me that the way I was behaving was not what she expected. And it was a, a good change of pace for her. And of course, there was never a relationship with her. But I and I told this story yes. to Robin before. Yes. So. It, well, <laughs> that says a lot, and it may have gotten even worse since then. So a lot of girls might not even want to be alone with a guy, 
just for that reason. Right. And I and wouldn't, if as the dad, I would say never. <laughs> never yeah. be alone with a guy. But, <laughs> but in, in some ways today, protection means condoms and birth control pills. And people don't talk about protecting your heart or oh, I love you that. Know, what sort of situations maybe you should avoid <laughs> to avoid all these guys trying to get into your pants. Okay, so, um, but, but, but at the same time, you do want that eventually, don't you? I mean, isn't that something you want down the road, just not tonight? Well, I think the idea is, can, can you protect yourself long enough to know if the guy can be trusted and if he's somebody you're interested in? And with so much focus on instant intimacy, we're kind of forgetting about that. Everything's instant in our society now. I know. So, uh, I think we forgot. That's why one of the guidelines of being your own brand of sexy is slow can be sexy. Because I think we've forgotten that. And uh, I think uh, women have a huge responsibility, too, to uh, other women as to what persona is created. Because some girls are brought up from day one that she is the queen, she's beautiful, she can do anything and get anything she wants just by flaunting her cuteness. And then uh, other women, you know, just do things naturally. And then when that girl grows up and she starts losing her cuteness, uh, she becomes very arrogant and feels like she's entitled to relationships, but but she doesn't want to be genuine about it. Or she can get really depressed because she's losing it or spend a lot of money on plastic surgery. Right, exactly. Uh, I love the, what you said before about protecting your heart. That, that is a wonderful thing to say and, and for everybody to kind of have as that mantra in a way. Um, the, uh, the book is called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. So give, give me an example of somebody who does this, maybe from culture, some, somebody we would all know. Who's naturally her own brand of sexy? Yeah. Well, I think Christina Hendricks okay. is a perfect example of someone who... You know, people are calling her fat. Oh, she is like, sexy. What's wrong with you? Oh, that <laughs> you young know? that young girl who does all about the bu- oh, what all, all about the about base. base. Yeah, yeah, that's a sexy Mad girl. Men. And mm-hmm. and you know there there are um, celebrities who are posting pictures of them in bathing suits on Facebook, and people are ripping them up, saying they're fat, and and they're saying, "Look, I'm happy the way I am." It kind of what's wrong with you? So I think there are some women out there, but it's difficult unless you're super confident to be doing that. And unfortunately for a lot of young women, they're just not that confident yet. They're, they're really hurt by these sorts of comments, and they feel like there's something wrong with them. So the more likely women are thinking, oh, you know, I, I need, should I get plastic surgery, or I need to be on a diet, or what's wrong with me that, you know, my skin, it doesn't look better. And I think that's more where most women are are taking this and that's really unfortunate um well maybe not to sound too much of a prude but maybe going back to some of the old ways of doing things courting the whole courtship thing maybe that's something we need to try to bring back i don't know how we would but Mm -hmm. well i think courtship's a great idea and i think if we have some ideas about protecting your heart and learning what's right for you better and not having to follow cultural norms just being aware of how our culture influences us can be a big first step because a lot of people aren't aware of it we just sort of go with what we think is normal and don't realize how much other people influence us well ladies there are some good guys as well as some bad guys oh, more good guys Absolutely. than bad guys just figure it out that there's some good ones and try to mm-hmm. find who they are and if, they, and if they're coming at you in a bar in, in a pack style then they're not the good guys yeah <laughs> uh and thank you for showing us how what a good guy is all about so that women can realize there, there's something else out there for them. Well, thank my mother and father for that. <laughs> whatever, whatever I did, I'm sure I didn't do it as well as they did it. Uh, Dr. Susan Edwin, the book is called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. The rest of us have to go buy it. I've got like 10 seconds. What's the good way to do this? Do you have a website? 
Yes, it's called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy.com. I'm on Facebook and Twitter as well. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for being, letting me w- be with you today. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You're actually making the world a better place with this message. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. As a massive hunt for two escaped killers continues, the probe also continues into how they got out of the upstate New York prison. We're Bartiromo and Fox Business, our sister network. 